Park. And uh, a, a, a slightly different type of comic, Maria Bamford, who's uh, an American com- comedian and, and just like the best comedian in the world, I think. She's, she's extraordinary, yeah. And yeah. she does a lot of voices and a lot of messing around. But I mean, if, that, if you take anything away from today, download some Maria Bamford and some Jess on that. I mean, yeah. she's extraordinary talents. Louis C.K. I rate as one of the best yeah. in the world as well. I mean, I know, I think a lot of people are already at that party, but if you haven't seen him, he's amazing. And Bill Barr, if you've not seen Bill Barr, he does actually a free podcast every week as well. It's just absolutely... Bonkers. <laughs> it's great. He's like an angry ginger guy. How come you yeah. like him? Yeah, yeah. He has, he has actually. He has a brilliant comment. Yeah. Any other? Any other? Qu- I mean, you can ask us anything. <laughs> oh, Spider Man, you got a question. <clears throat> um, have either of you ever regretted telling a joke at all? Uh, I don't. I don't think. I mean, <laughs> I. I, do, I have actually. No, I have actually regretted. A few things, but they're not sort of the ones you would imagine. Kind of thing. There's always like you, like, you can never be like perfect on thinking about it, right? But certainly, I did a TV show in. <laughs> I try. <laughs> I did a TV show in Scotland, right? And there was at the time there was an advert that was uh, t- uh, a health advert in Scotland uh, saying "Speak to your kids more," right? And uh, I did a, a routine about what a kind of stu- what a kind of stupid advice they're giving us now, right? And I, and I really regretted it when I thought about it because I thought that's exactly the advice that people need. It's exactly uh, bad parents, one of the big problems in Scotland. So that, and probably some guy steered that through a bunch of meetings. And went, no, no, that's what we need to do. And then I'm just turning up, going, <laughs> you know, I really, I really did regret that. And there's a feel like that, you know. When you think I don't know. Well, I think that's kind of okay though, because even if you make a joke of it, it makes just more awareness of it. I wouldn't, you know, I think it's uh, just that thing if it's out there in the ether. To talk about these things. I mean, in terms of regret, I don't, I don't think so. Because it's a weird thing where you can pick the joke. I could pick a joke that I've got into trouble with in the press and say, well, I wish I hadn't told that. But that could have been... There's probably maybe 10 or 20 jokes on the DVD, on the new one, that could be front pages of the Daily Express if they chose to go after me. If they said, look, I, you know, this guy, it's his turn. Let's get him. There's loads of jokes they could pick. And, they, you know, they didn't pick unreasonable ones. The ones that they picked are a fair summation of the kind of work I do. And I think you've got to stand behind it and go, well, that's the sort of thing I say. If you don't like it, I'm fine with that. I always look at it and think they could have literally picked any joke. They just let it they're all like that, you know. And they sort of go, oh, that particular thing. Ah, naughty man. <laughs> <laughs> Get the DVD. You've got a year's worth of stories ahead of you. Yeah, I did a thing. I, it's weird the ones that don't get picked on. Some, sometimes you, you tell a joke and you think, oh, I might get into trouble for this, but I just sort of, oh, I'll say it anyway, I don't care. And then there's nothing. I did one about Jimmy Savile the other day. Like, literally, he'd been dead two hours. <laughs> and I said, oh, Jimmy Savile, the presenter of Jim Will Fix It, has died. I guess he finally got round to reading my letter. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. They couldn't care less. <laughs> it's just weird sometimes how... You know, it's never the ones you expect. Um, oh, should we have another question? That's, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, sure, from, from over there. Uh, Jimmy, you obviously really enjoy the live performance side of it. And for the last few years, you've been touring pretty relentlessly. Is that something you plan to do for the next 20 or 30 years, or do you have other things you're going to work on otherwise? I or? think so. I mean, I think so. I really like the comics that I really kind of aspire. I mean, George Carlin, we just mentioned, but George Carlin, someone like that, or Billy Connolly, someone that's, for me, sort of being a, a comedian, that kind of journeyman thing of going, well, this is my job, and I'll keep on doing this and coming up with shows. As long as I can do it, I'll, I'll do it. I mean, it's the, it's the polar opposite of, of, uh, of Frankie. I mean, I, I'm, I think... I don't know what the motivation is there. I think there's just a, just a weird personality disorder that I've exploited. <laughs> I would like to just keep on doing it. So I'd like to keep on doing it. And I fi- kind of found a core audience now. I think I maybe offend less people now because there's a core audience that go, I'll just go, I'll go and see a show. Like they come and see it once every 12 months and they buy the DVD every year. And it's, once you've got that kind of core, you can kind of relax a little bit. People kind of come back and... And you're preaching to the choir, so to speak. People get that it's a joke and they get you just messing. And it's a, but it's a nice but thing. But don't you get knackered? Because I just find I get halfway through those tours and I'm just absolutely a physical wreck and slightly nuts. <laughs> don't, you, don't you just, does it ever get? To? Not so much. I mean, I really, I don't know. I don't have kids though, so I think that's a big, yeah. so my, my, I just, I mean, I, I kind of uh, live to work while, rather than work to live. I've got nothing else going on. <laughs> <laughs> this is it, yeah. Just got some jokes. Please like me. It's tragic when you say it like that, though, isn't it? This is like being interviewed or doing this kind of thing. It's like such sort of, it's just cheap therapy for us. Well, so was your, was your question basically, when will you stop? <laughs> Please, for the love of God, stop touring. Enough already. 
I put dates in for Christmas 2013 the other week. <laughs> I basically put them in the future. Any other, any other questions we could... When you tour the country, do you have to change your routines as opposed to where, what part of the country you're in? Like, would you do something different in Wales as you would sort of in Scotland? Not, not in the least. I've never found that you change it anywhere. People have different areas of what they will and won't accept, but I, I pretty much I do a very similar show and I write some jokes about the town usually. I, I, I find it's nights of the week, nothing to do with where you are in the country. Right. I find just certainly, you know, kind of Friday night, t people tend to be super boisterous because they've gone out after work, maybe at six o'clock because they're seeing a show, they've met up with some friends, they've had a few drinks, and by the time the show comes on, by the time I'm on stage at eight, they're pretty tanked up and, and kind of ready for fun. Saturday nights, they're a bit calmer. Saturday nights are probably the best. Sunday nights are great. Tuesday nights, they've clearly booked it going, I'll go and see him on the 29th. Great, we'll get tickets, fabulous. And then they arrive and go, it's a Tuesday, and think, well, I want to be watching CSI. What am I doing out? <laughs> Just kind of a bit kind of, I'm not sure how to react. They take a bit more warming up. But I think it's, it's surprisingly uniform. The thing I find really weird is, like, an audience this size, it's probably, what, 100 people here, it's not that many people... But you, like, as a focus group, audiences have got this kind of... There's a weird crowd intelligence where if a joke works, even in a 50-seater little warm-up room where we do tryouts for tours, if it works with 50 people, it'll work with 2,500 people. And there's a weird... I find it very odd how the British public have got kind of an identity that, that kind of that, that intelligence of... You know, when I said comics... Regu uh, when audiences regulate comedy, you decide what is and what isn't acceptable. And it's pretty universal, the, re the reaction. Yeah, yeah, it's strangely so. Yeah. I often warm up in like just 50 seaters. But they'll have the same, the same big laughs, laughing yeah. a round of applause. Everything will be the same sort of rhythm as it would be in a huge room. Yeah. Oh, you've got a question. Oh, lady. Hello, lady. Like, coming off the back of that question, do you have a favourite place in the country to play? Um, yeah, probably... I don't know. It's, it's probably somewhere like... I mean, I really like Liverpool because there's always a slight sense of edge that because it's got a real reputation as, as a tough place to play. And if they love you, they really love you. And if they hate you, they can, be, they can be quite harsh. I mean, I did a DVD in Glasgow because people are just mental. <laughs> like they're really kind of aggressive audiences and they heckle a lot. And I, I like a lot of audience interaction in the DVD, so you can guarantee you'll get heckled a lot. But I mean, they're all good. I find the, the shit of the town better the response <laughs> there's, there's a weird thing where not, not, not in that sense of like even shitty like Inverness is a beautiful town you know on Loch Ness it's gorgeous if you go there as a comedian there's a sense of oh he's come here we don't have to travel four hours to see him at the SECC there's like people are glad or you go and play Clacton you know somewhere just or you know big up Clacton yeah nice <laughs> But it's a weird thing where, where if you go to a small place, like I do quite a lot of kind of even sub-1,000, like sort of 900-seater gigs, so small regional theatres. Like if you go to Dudley, so I play a lot, I've recorded the, this DVD in Birmingham, but I play Dudley, which is only seven miles away, but I played to sort of 1,000 people there in the town hall. And they're so pleased you came, because a lot of them are young people that don't drive or people that, you know, it's just easier to get to. And I think they kind of appreciate that. There's a weird sense where people want to go out, but they, some people haven't got the wherewithal to travel as well, so... Any other? Oh, yeah, there's a... There's, oh, there you go. Yeah, then why not? The mic's right next to you. Do you have a, a definitive moment in comedy where you sort of thought, I am funny, and then it come off the back of that, if you know what I'm I mean? I'm super looking forward to it. It's going to be... <laughs> well, where I kind of went, oh, I've made it, kind of thing. Not really. I think if you look... Like, I've done seven DVDs now, and if you look at the first one, I look like I have a stick up my ass. I mean, I'm so uptight and nervous and... You know, performance-wise, you feel like you get better every year, or I certainly feel like my performance changes a little bit and I'm a bit looser than I was and a bit more myself. And my stage persona or kind of character is getting closer to who I actually am. And that's kind of an onward-going, you know, thing. Hopefully you just get better all the time. But I don't think I'm, you know, I don't... I wouldn't have thought that I'm there yet in terms of, you know, when you look at... You know, you look at someone like, you know, as effortless as George Carlin, you kind of slightly go, well, what's the point of me? 